Hi everyone, so today's video I thought I would um, do it on a project that I've been working on. This is a painting that I did for myself of my two dogs, Maisie the Staffy and Lexi my Spaniel. I decided to split this video into two bigger parts and then I'll do some focus videos. I've already uploaded one of how I did Maisie's nose. But purely down to how big this is, this is 29 inches by 21 inches. This has taken me days into weeks to get finished. I have been working on it in between commissions, but there were so many hours. I just I needed to break this up into two separate videos. So you can see that this painting is pretty much life size. The the dogs in the in the painting, they are just as big as them the sat next to it which is why I wanted to take a photo with the painting and them sat side by side just to show how big this was. By working this big it does mean that I've been able to get a lot of detail so for this part of the video I'll focus on Maisie's head, neck, her chest area and part of the body. So I'm still getting to grips with and the video software and how to use it but I have managed to put the photo overlay so that you can see the reference photograph um, of what I'm working on. So just like with my acrylics and my pastels I do the background first. For this piece it was used, I use my airbrush um, and my Createx paint which I will do a video on how I do my airbrushing but that will be something separate. I do have some airbrushing videos in my playlist but I'll do one with some voiceover and explain the setup that I've got. So I will just say if you're working with pastels the techniques that I'm using here are very similar um, in acrylics so you can use the tips and techniques that I'm going to explain throughout the video for pastels as well. Because of how much work goes into the eye, especially something like this with this much reflection, I'm going to make a focus video. So I haven't focused on the eye for this bit, but this is always where I tend to start with every single one of my portraits. So I then work on building my base layers and this part looks terrible, looks like I painted it with my feet. That's absolutely fine. It's just a layering process. Don't give up. That's the biggest tip. Don't give up. They look terrible at this stage. But it is a layering process. It is meant to look as bad as this. Notice I don't do one complete solid mid-tone. I do still pay attention to where my light, lighter areas are. They all are still classed as the mid-tones. But it is variance in that colour. It's not just one, one set colour. I want to make sure that I capture the light above her eye. The top of the forehead. Because you need to follow the lights and darks. And put them in in these stages. So that you make sure you capture the... Uh, skeletal and muscular structure of the dog. In these variances between lights and darks is what will make that dog look like that dog. You know above the eye and where that shadow curls over that highlight above her eyebrow that is all making sure that you follow the, the natural um, structure of what you're drawing regardless if it's a horse, dog, cat, whatever it might be. So as you know from my previous videos, I work in small areas. I am using my my Dalo Round 1 for this. Um, and this there is the same brand but the liner, so I'm swapping between the two. Really small brushes, even for this size painting. And it's purely just because of how I like to work. I like to focus on getting an area, you know, 80% complete before I move on to another area. Now I use Liquitex Basics for my acrylic painting, always have done. Um, some people don't like them because they are quite transparent, but because I like working in glazes, they are perfect. Um, I do find that obviously when you put your first initial base layers down, they do show a lot of your background subjects. So you can um, paint your whole subject a completely solid colour and then put your sketch lines on top if you wanted to do that. That is an option, um, but I really like them for glazing, which you'll, you'll see later on in the video. While I'm waiting for the top section to dry, I'm now starting to add the first set of detailed layers. And this is just with my Dead and Rowney liner brush. I'm just making sure that I put in some of these details following the direction of the fur. Making sure that I've got varying colours between the highlights. So you can see that just below her eye there, there's some lighter brush marks, which is what I'm doing now. And that's just to make sure that you capture those very subtle differences as to where that part of the fur is catching more light than the part that's just below it which curves down towards her muzzle. 
also once i've put some details in you can mix a darker mid-tone and go back over the top which is quite often how i work varying up because just because it's a lighter fur doesn't necessarily mean that that is what is on top you can have a mixture it's just about breaking down your reference photo and seeing the different layers and different depth of fur and capturing it in that way that makes the most sense so the the things that's the fur that's closest to the skin is what you want to be drawing first. Now using a liner brush will allow you to load more paint on the brush and it will mean that you can do far more brush strokes without in between layering up more paint on that brush. So you might be able to get 10 brush strokes before you have to reload with paint compared to a round brush which you might only be able to get a couple of strokes from so it means that you can get a longer brush stroke because there's more paint within the bristles of the brush that makes it perfect for painting fur a really light hand as well because with liner brushes the more press you put on the brush the thicker your line will be so here you can see i'm paying really close attention to my reference photo paying attention to where the fur sits the direction of that fur and making sure that you don't draw it every single fur stroke exactly the same because you don't want it to look fake the there needs variance in the angle in the direction subtle variances you don't obviously want to make the fur going really random because she's got short hair so it all will go in a similar direction but you just want to make sure that they're not all exactly the same exactly the same dimensions you just want to vary it up but still follow the direction of that fur a tip for using the liner brush as well it has to be slightly thinner paint so mix i use water mix a little bit more water with your paint that you've got to make sure it's that much thinner so that it comes off the brush that much easier if you're struggling to use a liner that's probably what's happening you haven't got your paint your paint thin enough in order for it to come out the end of the brush I have had a request to do a uh, focus video on how I, I did the ear so I will make this one of those those videos where it's slowed down and I just focus on this one section from start to finish so I will do that but I will go over the basics it's exactly the same as before put in where your lights your darks are get your mid tones down and pay really close attention to your reference photo when it comes to painting things like ears, hands, anything like that that you are struggling with, it's quite often because your brain thinks, I know what an ear looks like. However, as you can see, there are many different shapes here and, and colours. Because the strong light source is coming from directly behind Maisie, it's creating this glow within the ear. If you're struggling to paint anything like that and you just can't get it, turn your artwork upside down. That will force your brain to see shapes rather than focusing on an ear and you'll find that you'll start to then be able to break each bit down turn your work upside down when you think you've got to the point when you're happy and it will actually look more like what you've been trying to achieve if you are trying to create this glow this this look like the light is coming through this middle part of her ear the one paint i would really recommend is the transparent mixing white it is translucent as the name suggests and it means that you can capture the glow effect because it allows the colors from the previous layers to show through it makes that glassy type effect i love it it's perfect i use it for reflections in eyes if i still wanted some of the sky to show through on the bluer layers underneath love it it's one of my favorite favorite paints so when you are drawing the ears make sure you add these details that i'm doing here from the head fur those very subtle strokes that overlap the ear it's, it's details like this that will make your painting appear realistic. Don't just leave a sharp edge from where the head finishes and the ear begins. One thing throughout this whole painting is making sure I capture those really strong highlights. That white on the very top of her head, the very top of her ear, and you'll see that when I start on the other side of her face, there's a really strong white highlight. It's pure white. That looks, that's the one reason why I chose this photograph the low sunlight was at the back of both of um, Maisie and Lexi and it was creating this beautiful strong lighting which therefore strong lighting means strong shadows and I just loved it 
So here it's all a layering process. I'm adding very subtle details here back to my liner brush and you can see there that I've chiseled the edge. So I'm not using it as a rounded shape at the end. I am push, pushing the, the brush and pulling it towards me one side and then turning it over and doing the exact same movement creating a chisel type edge. And that allows you to get an even finer line. For the whole of Maisie's head, I've practically used a, a handful of brushes. I've used the Dell and Rani round size one and their liner brush. Um, and then the purple handed brushes that you can see me use, unfortunately, I have no idea where I got them from the works or something like that. I cannot find them anywhere and it appears they've been discontinued, which makes me want to cry because they're one of my favorite brushes. But like I say, the generic ones, are they work perfectly fine as well. For this part of the nose I've really sped up just because I have done a voiceover and a slower version focusing purely on this nose and how I did it. So if you wanted to see that with voiceover head over to my acrylics playlist and you'll be able to find that there. I will just say I'm really sorry if the blue gloves are distracting. With everything going on in the world I got a little bit over the top with hand washing and I made my hands really really sore. So I had to cover them in cream and moisturiser and just to make sure I didn't get any of that on my painting I have had to wear the gloves so I do apologise about that. So it's later on in the video I've actually taken the top off the uh, glove of my index finger and that's so that I could still blend the layers of paint um, obviously making sure that I had no moisturiser on that finger because I didn't want to be rubbing that into my painting. So this is the same process, putting in the base layers, refining everything, making sure that the base layers aren't messy. I really, it's just how I like to work. I don't like putting all the layers in quickly, the base layers, it's just not how I like to work. I do think that way you lose definition. By me working the way that I am with the small brushes and putting the base layers in as I have done and how I explain how I do it, you can still see now that these base layers, although they are still not detailed at all you can still see the shape that you can still see the variation and it curves round it would be so easy to just put a base layer down that's the same flat color you can still obviously add layers on top but i do think just working in this way i feel like i'm achieving more because i feel like my base layers still have that realistic aspect to it they still focus on the skeletal structure of the dog i don't just put them down randomly and you can see by these layers what I mean by how transparent the um, the Liquitex Basics is. It can be a little bit frustrating, I have to admit, with these base layers. However, when it comes to the using them for the fur and the glazing, I love them. You could put a lighter layer on top and because they are more transparent compared to other brands, it still shows a degree of that layer from underneath. And I think... you. It just looks that much more 3D, but you can see the layers underneath. You're never technically blocking the layer out that you've done, so no layer is ever a waste. So again, working on the eye, like I say, I will do a focus video of the eye for you so that you can see, especially maybe with Maisie's eyes, because there was a lot of reflection, a nice blues, and um, that strong highlight from the scene at the back, because this was taken next to the beach. So maybe I'll do a focus on um, on this, on the her eyes, that might be um, of use. Don't forget to pop any suggestions in the comments below if there's anything specific you'd like me um, to make a video of. One thing I will suggest, if you are struggling with um, the fur direction or um, any aspect of your portrait, I usually find it's because um, people tend to work on the portrait as a whole, so they'd be looking at the whole face. Well, when I approach a painting or a portrait pastel, regardless of the medium, I always focus on that area and I will actually, I use a, a tablet that's what's got my reference photo on. So I'll actually enlarge that reference photo for the area that I'm working on and then I'm never tempted to try and work on the on the head or the face as a whole. I think that might make you more tempted to uh, swap and change and work on the left side and then the right side and you might end up getting a bit despondent. I find that, that if it was me I find I might actually work slower because you're you're getting distracted with what you're you're working on in front of you. And then as I've mentioned in my previous videos, once you've got that 
area that you're focusing on to 80% complete, you can then move on to the, the other part. Now the reason why I always say 80% is because once you've got colour in and around another area, you'll probably find that you'll need to tweak the area that you've already got to 80% because once you've got a colour tone next to it, you might find that you need the other part slightly darker or, or slightly lighter. So once it's got to the 80% completion mark, you can then step away from it and then see whether or not there's any tweaks that need to be made. Another tip is also, you could always say take a photo of your portrait, have a look at it on your phone because it tends to be when you look at it like that you notice problems and you notice things that you might not notice when actually looking at your painting. Um, it's just obviously how your brain is processing that image slightly differently. So the amount of times I'll photograph work and I'll realise that that's not it's not how I wanted it or that bit needs to be tweaked or that bit stands out to me. Like this part of Maisie's ear that I'm working on now, I actually went back and adjusted that because I didn't like how sharp I'd made that highlight um, and I didn't actually notice that until I'd taken a photo and then the first thing I noticed when I looked at my phone was that highlight in her eye. So I actually adjusted that. So you can see going now back with a smaller brush, adding some details. And I find that now that I've got this part of her face already in so much detail and I've added so much detail to this part, it makes me feel like I've achieved more than if I'd just done the whole of her face in base layers and then done each layer separately, if that makes sense. Um, I, I, it's just my, how I've always worked. But So if you are struggling to get a, a portrait completed and you're finding it overwhelming, breaking it down into small sections is, is definitely the way to go. So this process is the same as I've explained before. So I'll mention about how I get my outline um, down on my on my canvas. So this is the same process regardless if I'm doing an acrylic painting on canvas or panel um, and my pastels on pastel mat. So what I will do is, and you, there are many other ways of doing it, but this is my preferred way. Um, canvases and pastel mat, I really don't like erasing lines from because you don't want to damage the surface. It's just having lines erased. You just it's just a hassle. So what you can do is sketch out your your outline on a piece of paper or tracing paper and then use transfer paper to put that underneath your sketched outline that you've already done. Put that over the top of your canvas or your paper and then use an embossing tool to uh, do, transfer your outline onto your canvas or your paper. That's the, the cleanest, most tidiest way and it makes sure that you haven't got to erase any lines on your canvases, on your paper because pastel mat, I've always found, it never erases entirely because of the texture and canvas, let's face it, well as with pastel mat, it's, it's expensive to buy so you don't want to be making wrong sketch lines. Um, so doing the transfer paper once you've got your image sketched out on a separate piece I find is the much more effective way to go. If there is a part of the sketch once you've put it on your um, your canvas or your paper and you realise you've missed a section, use a for a canvas use a white charcoal pencil and freehand some of those sketches sketch lines back in that you've missed. Or with pastel mat, you, obviously you can just use a pastel pencil, a lighter pastel pencil to put some more of your um, lines in because the amount of times I've used the transfer paper and I've missed a part but no no big deal you can just freehand that in afterwards. So once I'd done the right side of her face I then made this start on her muzzle paying really close attention to my reference photos where your lights are where your darks are um, and as you can see here I'm still using the same brushes so I've got in total th four brushes um, the filbert liner the round and that one purple brush which I can't get hold of which is a real nuisance. So areas like this like the chest and the body when you're working on this scale is obviously that much bigger so um, I'm still using the brushes here that I've mentioned in the previous video but I may start to add a couple of the next size up just to add a little bit more paint down quicker just for these base layers. Because the process is exactly the same as how I've mentioned earlier, I have sped up this part of the video quite quickly, um, just so it's not entirely long. But if there is a part of this that you want me to make a focus video on, then let me know. But the process is exactly the same. Start with your darker layers, 
build on top and this is where the most of the shadow is on Maisie at the front because obviously this is the part of her body that's getting less light so she's got that really really bright highlight on her back um, and then it's casting the shadow because there's no light getting to her chest. Once I've got my base layers in I go back through with the liner which is the main brush that I've used for this purely because like I say you can get that much more brush strokes without having to keep reloading your brush. And this area of her body is how I use glazes. So that area of the lighter fur that I've just put down on the right side of her um, neck, I'll then go over with a glaze, which is just the colour that you want, thinned down with water, go over the top of your, um, your painting in that area, as long as you make sure the layers are dry underneath and it will tint the colour, but you can still see the detail underneath. I can make a focus video as well on glazing if that's a specific subject and how I glaze colour um, so pop it in the comments if you'd like to see that. Here are a few work in progress um, photos just showing how big this portrait was and why it took me so long. I hope the video helped, um, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notifications of new content and if you could like the video if it was useful that would be very much appreciated, it really does help. Um, and. I'll be next uploading on Tuesday. Thank you. Bye.